Hello, my name's Craig Barton, and welcome to a video that looks at how you can identify misconceptions students may have in a topic before you actually deliver the lesson, using my website, diagnosticquestions.com. Now, when I first designed the website, this was one of the main reasons I had in mind, because I remember when I was first starting my teaching career, I had no idea the kind of mistakes students were going to make with fractions, ratio, and algebra. And the first two or three years were just a complete learning curve because kids were making mistakes that I could never possibly have anticipated. And there must be loads of teachers in this position, trainee teachers, NQTs, or even teachers with vast experience who just want to kind of refresh their knowledge and get a deep insight into how students from all around the world, different cohorts, different ages of students, how they understand and misunderstand certain topics. So the best way to do this is imagine that you're about to teach a top, uh, topic, say, um, equivalent fractions, simplifying fractions, something like that. Have a look at some of the questions that are on there, and specific, specifically the questions kids are getting wrong. So the best way to do this is go to data and go to questions. And this takes you to um, a data page that has um, the success rate of every single topic on the website. So if we go for maths, so filter it down a little bit, and what do we want? Fractions. If we go into number and then we go into fractions and specifically I was interested in let's say equivalent fractions. Now this will find me all the questions on equivalent fractions and it is filtered by the most incorrectly answered ones and you can change that filter to anything you want there but I'm incorrect sounds good to me. Now let's look at this one, a seemingly innocuous question here, which uh, fraction is equivalent to 5 sevenths? Now I'm going to fire up explanations here. Now the, the problem I think we have as a teaching profession is that a lot of maths teachers, by definition, are good at mathematics, so will have no doubt been in top sets or next to top sets throughout their school year, and may well never have the kind of misconceptions, um, or encountered the misconceptions even, that the students they teach have. So hopefully this is a way to get experience of that before you actually deliver the lesson. So which fraction is equivalent to 5 sevenths? Now um, straight away we get access to all the um, explanations of students who've got it right and these are the kind of uh, ways that we'd expect um, high ability students or students with a real depth of understanding to explain um, these fractions. So both the denominator and numerator go into the other six times so a very crystal clear explanation of, of why C um, is equivalent to that. But if we click on filter your data, uh, we can see that C has only been got correct, uh, been answered correctly 44% of the time. The wrong answers are shared pretty evenly between the other ones. So why on earth are students going for A as an answer? Why would uh, 10, 20 ones be right, 10 over 21? Well, let's have a look. We click on A, we can read um, all the explanations for students who've gone for that. Um, this is quite interesting. Uh, 5 is 2 times 10 and 7 is uh, 7 times 3 is 21, so 10 over 71. So there seems to be a clear understanding there, or misunderstanding I should say, that if 21 is in the 7 times table and 10 is in the 5 times table, you're good to go. They're equivalent fractions. So there's a misconception that I, as a newly qualified teacher, would certainly not have anticipated. And again, this pops up over and over again. 2 5s are 10 and 3 7s are 21 perfectly explained by the students to reveal the key misconceptions they have. It's a similar story with D actually, D uh, 15 over 28. So if I choose uh, D instead, you'll see from the students, look at this, I like this, it's definitely D because 5 times 3 is 15 and 7 times 3 is 28. Well here actually we've got a slightly different misconception haven't we? Because that, that student seems to be aware that they need to be times multiplied by the same thing but he's got an issue with his 7 times table, 7 times 3 is 28, so that particular student's claiming. So there's two misconceptions that we need to be aware of. A major misconception when it comes to thinking that anything uh, in the times table is good to go for your fraction and also the really reinforcing the importance of the times tables themselves, how much they underlie all topics, and in particular, equivalent fractions. But what about B? Why on earth are 17% of people saying 35 over 35? Well, again, let's have a look at this particular case for B. I think this is absolutely fascinating, this, because 5 times 7 is 35. B is the answer, because 35 over 35 is the same amount times the same amount. So there's a misconception here that I would never have dreamed of, that students are aware there's something to do with 7 times 5. Perhaps they're, perhaps they're getting that from um, making the denominator the same for adding fractions, maybe. Possibly it's something related to that. But now all of a sudden, sorry, I just clicked off that. Now all of a sudden, they're doing it for simplifying fractions as well. So as a teacher, 
going into a lesson about to teach um, equivalent fractions, hopefully that would arm me with the kind of uh, knowledge and information about the likely misconceptions students um, are, are, are going to make, which should hopefully better inform my teaching. And once I've looked at that question, I can keep going. They seem to have misconceptions when it comes to fractions um, expressed diagrammatically. There again, we get that same equivalent fraction that's only 49% of students are getting right. There seems to be an issue here when it comes to figuring out what fractions are halfway between others. And I can just keep going through these, keep finding questions, keep looking for different examples until I build up a really good picture of students' understanding of fractions, which will better inform me as a teacher when I go into the lesson. Um, and you can do that for all subjects on the website and that's the first thing I do when I'm coming up to teaching a new module even though I've delivered fractions or whatever it is for the last 10 years and because I think this is such an important thing um, every couple of weeks or so I pick out a particular question that's interested me or surprised me and um, by the students responses and I do a blog post about it so if you just go to my Mr Barton maths blog and you go to diagnostic questions question of the week you'll see each week I pick out a question so uh, the last one I did here at the time of recording was uh, probability tree diagrams um, I pop the question up for, for people to have a go at so it's that one there and then I talk about the different student responses and what they might reveal and how we might um, address that in the classroom. So again, if, you, if you're interested yourself or perhaps you've got a student teachers or NQTs or something like that, um, encourage them to have a look at that because hopefully it will give them insight into the understanding and mistakes and misconceptions students have on different subjects. Hope that was useful. Um, if you're interested in the other videos in this series, how to assign quizzes and analyze and all that kind of stuff, just go to learn and the how-to video page. You'll find all you need there. Take care and bye for now.